Are you aware of what happened last night in Kansas City? <laughs> barely. Barely, Willie. <laughs> I mean, uh, just tell me, do I feel like a victim? Do I feel oppressed? Do I feel like the officials are seeing things on one side but not seeing them on the other? They give the Chiefs like five or six or seven downs before they have to uh, kick the ball. I see bad calls. I see bad plays. I see our mayor stepping into it big time. After have have all should spend more time with the Dalai Lama. Uh, nonetheless, I mean, he, he, he's got some serious, you didn't see Sports Center last night with SVP, but it was pretty strong against Avtab Pureval. And then Travis Kelsey was hilarious. So just, can you oh, give me? He called him out. He, I mean, he called, he, you don't see that, do you? No, I mean, that was, he, he called him out big time. Uh, man, I'll tell you, Willie, it, uh, you know, it's almost like, you wonder, hey, is it a bad dream? And am I going to wake up? But no, it's it's reality. It is, it is what it is, as they say. And and to me, the whole thing drips with so much irony because all season long, the one thing the Bengals did well, I mean, week in and week out, was not self-destruct by penalty. They finished with the second fewest penalties called against them in the in the league this year. Mm. Six uh, penalty yards, six hundred twenty-three penalty yards was second fewest in the entire league. 81 penalties called was tied for fourth fewest. So they they were they were doing a good job in terms of not uh, you know not not killing themselves. And I agree with you about the officials, and I've talked about this for a while. In my mind, forget these all star crews. The team, the, the officiating crew that grades out the best for the entire season in its entirety, go to the Super Bowl instead of taking the highest rated umpire from this crew, the highest rated field judge from this crew, the highest rated side judge from this crew. They haven't worked together all year. I mean, just, I, it, do, it doesn't make sense to me. It's like, you know, it, it, you're, you're trying to have an all-star, uh, nine all-stars for your baseball team that haven't worked together. I mean, sometimes the, the dynamic of that changes a lot. Guys know where the other guy is, what he's supposed to be doing, how he's supposed to be doing it. They have all these reps all year long. And they, it's, it's just different. It's just different when you're working with somebody else. And, man, yeah, I mean, I, I thought the officials had maybe even a worse game than the Bengals did. The Bengals were second worst, though, that's for sure. Well, who had a worse uh, game than the referees or uh, Aftab Pureval? Would you rather be Aftab Pureval or the referees? <laughs> I think I'd rather be the referees. <laughs> yeah, all right now. Uh, as far as Aaron Donald, last year in the Super Bowl, the great number 99 wrecked uh, the Bengals offensively, and Chris Jones did the same thing, a younger version of Aaron Donald. There was no answer for him. Uh, what do you see as a uh, couple things the Bengals must address in the offseason, especially on the offensive line? Well, I think when they get all hands on deck, back healthy again it, it'll be a, a much different dynamic but they'll, they'll 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 try to add to it for sure they'll try to tweak it you know the biggest thing is get number nine signed and then everything else you know see what you got left and, and work through everything else because there's there's a lot of uh this is a young football team the core of the football team is young and talented will they be able to keep it all and if not and there's a good chance they won't in fact <laughs> probably 100% chance it won't be able to keep it all. You have to prioritize, uh, you know, how, who you're going to keep and how you're going to keep them. And obviously the number one priority is is getting number nine under contract for $50 million a year or whatever it, it may be. It's going to be a, a very, very uh, exorbitant amount. It's going to be big numbers. So that that's that's the first thing. And then, um, you know, com, com, do a composite of your team from that point on. And they, they do have uh, some talent. There's no question. And fact, again, it's youthful talent. In fact, next year, they're going to be a year better, not a year older. And the Bengals have the window wide open for the next uh, two or three years. As I understand the contract, you know more about it than I do. But no matter what happens, Joe Burrow is going to be a, going to be a Bengal at least for three more years. He's got one year left on his rookie deal. And after that and after that, he can be franchised once or twice. He has three years. So what's the advantage of Mike Brown, who you may know can be difficult on contracts? What, what's the advantage of signing Joe Burrow now as opposed to waiting for three years? Because every year it's going to, the, the, the number's going up, you know. So you, you, the thought is, the plan is, or the, the hope is, um, get it done. And for a number that, that Joe feels comfortable with and 
hope that Joe realizes the number has to be a number where if you want to keep some of the people that he's been working with, some of the weapons and some of the things that make up uh, the offense, uh, you know, will you take a, not not a discount, but will you take a little bit of a friendlier deal or whatever the case may be? Um, and if you can't, then you go through that entire process. Kirk Cousins made more money than any quarterback in NFL history by playing out that uh, that option uh, two years in a row. And then, then he ended up going getting a bonanza when he left the Washington Redskins to go to the Minnesota Vikings. He played the system like a fiddle. So, um, you, you know, the earlier you can get him signed, theoretically, uh, the, the less expensive it's going to be. That's that's the thought, and that's the goal, potentially. According to the Internet, uh, he was a, he signed a four-year, $36.1 million deal, Joe Burrow. That's about $9 million a year. And now it's, yep. that's his number. Now he's up to $50 million. And he has said he wants to stay here. And Mike Brown has said we want to keep him here. So if that happens, that will be the impetus for the county to redo uh, Paycor Stadium to make it a better facility. Uh, the county's about to spend and wants to wants to spend five hundred million dollars to completely upgrade Paycor over the next uh, five years. Five hundred million. That number is going up. And I, and I talk to the commissioners. They're good political friends of mine, and they tell you that their priority is to get the Bengals lease done. That's what they want. How it's done, I don't know. But do you you know the man better than most? You've been around him for about fifty years. Uh, you have a sense that Mike Brown, uh, at all cost, almost wants to stay in Cincinnati. Yes, I do. I I, I do feel that. Um, there's no no question in my mind. Uh, at almost all costs, but um, not every like to. Yeah, I would like to stay in Cincinnati. Um, but, you know, it's you know, the bottom line is this football team, like Joe Burrow has said, the window of opportunity is his entire career. He is a premier player at a premier position. Um, the, the Bengals, he, he came within a whisker of doing something that no NFL quarterback has done in the history of the game, winning back-to-back road conference championship games. It's been done plenty of times in conference championship games at home. Maybe one at home, one on the road, and another one at home. Never back-to-back road conference championships game games have been won by the by the same quarterback. So I mean, that that says a lot that he put himself in position. And he was within, you know, one personal foul penalty of going into overtime and maybe getting that bad boy done. Think about this: that in the history of the Bengals, uh, this quarterback has won at Tennessee, at Kansas City, and at Buffalo when it mattered the most. He, he won the big games when he had to win them. And going on the road is not a big deal. The swagger continues. And and, and I, I assume he wants to stay and take some sort of minor discount, but not a major discount. And it wouldn't kick in until the, after the fourth year anyway. He's in his completed his third year. So financially, they're in good shape. But, uh, well, I know... Well, he'd, get, he'd, 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 get, he'd get the bonus... He get the bonus. He get that money up front, and the Bengals could then prorate it. You know, over the length of the contract. You start playing all the salary cap stuff that uh, that you know uh, Katie Brown is so good at. She's as good as anybody in the league. That's what everybody, you know, everybody says. So uh, if there's anybody that can get it figured out, um, I don't think there's there's maybe um, an organization that has a higher collective IQ. Than Katie and Mike Brown. I right. mean, they are smart people. Brilliant. Smart people. And they don't have all that dead money. I can recall that Roger Goodell about two months ago sent out an email telling owners to be careful because you're paying out contracts for hundreds of millions of dollars for coaches, especially head coaches, that aren't coaching anymore. And it, and it hamstrings franchises. And that is something Mike Brown and Katie Blackburn Brown, Troy Blackburn Brown, will never ever get involved in and having all this dead money. Uh, unlike the Reds, the number one, number three player on the Reds team this year is Ken Griffey Jr. He's yeah. making the third most. You would never find that with the Bengals, would you? No, you, you'll never find that. The thing, though, now is, as we know, Mike Brown values the quarterback position. He played it himself collegiately. Dartmouth. Um, he, he, at Dartmouth, correct. And, and, and his dad obviously valued the quarterback position. He had great ones. So if he wants to... St- and continue to compete in the AFC. I mean, Mahomes, Allen, these guys aren't going anywhere. The AFC has a bigger number of quality, talented young quarterbacks than the NFC does. The Bengals are right there. 
competing with these football teams. You have to keep Joe Burrow around in order to stay there. And and uh, look, look at all the hype. Look at all the excitement. Mm. Look at mm. how look at how the community. Look how the region has just bubbled up. And the economic ripple effect of that is enormous. So you want to try to keep all that intact. Dave Lapham, thank you. Uh, jo- Joseph Asai, what he did, in a sense, uh, it was called the the, uh, the the worst penalty by an NFL player in history. That that's what the expert said this morning. And that's something hanging around his neck for a while. We don't know how things would have turned out, but he, uh, I don't think there was going to be a 60-yard field goal kicked. Can Joseph Asai get over this? Yeah, that's that's uh, he's going to need a lot of support, and um, and he's a great kid, man. He really is, and he's smart. He's very intelligent. He is very aware, but in the heat of battle, you know, sometimes mistakes are made, and and that one is uh, one that he certainly would like to have back, but. He was playing really well too. He he was having a very very strong football game, and and now this, this uh, you know this black mark is going to be following him around for a little while. Long time. But th- this too shall pass. It's just a question of how long, Willie. You're right. How long? Who did a worse job, Joseph Asai, the linebacker, number fifty eight, or Aftab Pureval, or the officials? Who had a worse day? <laughs> Well, you're talking about one one play. Uh, let's see, the penalty as opposed to sticking your foot in the mouth or making multiple mistakes. I'd say the officials. They officials. suck. <laughs> you better be careful with that because you might be uh, you might be in Wokeville. But uh, fortunately, the Bengals were lived to fight another day next year, the year after. You're in the belly of the beast, Dave. But uh, for those of us who are here, left behind, doing the it was unbelievable, the excitement in Cincinnati the past three or four days. And uh, that has continued. Now we have an object other than the players themselves, which are the officials, Aftab Pureval, and the coin flip in the NFL, which is a good thing to diverge that issue away from those primarily responsible. And I think number one's the offensive line and maybe someone who can attack the quarterback a little better. Hendrickson was pretty good two years ago, not so good now. And, of course, uh, the Bengals have the great uh, uh, Hubbard, but uh, he's more of a run stopper than, and a playmaker than a char. They, they, they need kind of a, a younger, more aggressive uh, linebacker that can get after the quarterback like a Von Miller style. But we got to rhyme. But, Dave Lapham, you're the best at what you do. You're coming back next year as the color analyst? <laughs> yeah, that's the plan, Willie. You're going to keep going. Going to keep rolling. You, you, you're my hero. and. and, and you keep rolling. I gotta, I gotta try to match that in, that level of uh, <laughs> commitment and intensity, man. It's been forty years, forty years, but uh, I hope to have another forty months, forty years, maybe forty <laughs> months. But, uh, all right, the great number sixty-two, and good luck. We'll be listening tonight, six to nine. Bengals line in the studio. Thanks, Willie. All right, keep hope alive, Dave Lapham. Keep hope alive.